Hello and welcome to this episode of Business Basics. My name is Lee Iben. I'm the head coach at Action Coach Campus. We're a business coaching firm here in Iowa City. And every day I try to speak with at least one or two business owners. Um, and today my special guest, of course, is Riley with Pear Deck. Welcome, Riley. It's great to have you here today. Thanks. It's great to be here. Now, Riley, uh, you know what? Uh, you're not the typical retail on Main Street kind of a store. You have a completely innovative business model. Can you share with that how that got started and, and what it really is, what Pear Deck means to everybody? Yeah. So um, one of my co-founders is actually my wife, Michael, who I met um, working at Scatter Good Friends School near Iowa City. Sure. Uh, and we were teachers when the um, one-to-one computing devices started to enter the classroom. And we noticed that there was so much opportunity on the internet and you know the devices were so powerful, but they actually made it harder to teach. Our kids mm -hmm. were at that time, it was Facebook, uh, you know, looking at all kinds of distracting stuff during class. And as teachers, it was really hard to get instructional content onto those machines. So they ended up not being used very much. And when we did use them, there was a lot of classroom management. Um, so we started the business back in 2014 to help turn those devices into teaching, uh, into a system that was designed for teaching and help teachers create powerful learning moments for all of their students every day. So tell me, um, having, having worked in the education space myself, tell me exactly how does a student interact or how does a teacher use Pear Deck in, in their classroom? So the basic idea is that when the teacher asks a question, instead of calling on hands, uh, Pear Deck lights up on every student's device, which would be on their desk or now at, on their, at home, maybe over Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and every student can answer every question that the teacher has. And then on the teacher's device, Pear Deck helps her see um, which students have answered in what way, and she can start discussions based on what the students have thought. And it completely changes the expectation of the classroom from one kid's gonna answer the question, you know, that kid at the front of the room that always has his hand up to we're all answering and we're all participating in a learning community. I love that. And that's that's such a great idea. And Unfortunately, there's so many great ideas out there that never, never make it to market. What were the steps that, that you and your wife took to go from inception from that, that really cool idea, that aha moment to did you have, who'd you have to hire, what you have to do along the way before it became out there? We had two other co-founders, Anthony Schulter um, headed up our business end of things and uh, Dan Sweeney, another local Iowa City and um, was our VP of design. And we okay. knew that the product had to be simple uh, mm -hmm. to help teachers from where they're at, but also instructionally effective. And then the third key ingredient for us is making people proud of the work they're doing. So we mm -hmm. always went out of our way to show people, hey, you're not just using a fun app, you're reaching all of the kids in your classroom and you're making everyone feel like they belong in your classroom and uh, you're changing the way they think about their own education. So, so you and your wife take uh, Dan out to dinner and you say, hey, we got this idea. Let me, let me show you on paper what we're thinking about, Dan. And, and can, you, can you make this uh, on an online device, right? Um, that's not too far off. We actually we started a <laughs> company before Pear Deck uh, called Active okay. Grade. And okay. you just described the exact origin story of Active Grade. We were in uh, the wedge uh, where the merge um, yes. co-working space is now. And uh, you know, I had like printed out an NDA and gave it to Dan. We had not, none of us knew anything what we we're doing. And, right, uh, right. Get you out from there. And then, and then uh, Dan starts working on this project for you and you guys are, you know, you're kind of all uh, piecing it together financially to make it all work. And then you, you bring in your other partner who's your, your business guy, right? And you're saying, okay, we've got this great idea and it looks good. Now we have to tell the world about it. Yeah, that, that's in spirit. Uh, really right, close to what happened. Yeah, but it, it, it takes a while. I mean, not 2014, six years. That's pretty pretty good growth for six years time, uh, especially with 2020. Yeah, I think we were at the um, the exact right time. We saw the tech, the capabilities of the technology changing, mm -hmm. um, but no one had thought. I don't mean to say that. Lots of people had thought deeply about how technology could change in the classroom, but that was in the form of big, expensive. You know, you've heard interactive whiteboards and other like big equipment that you have to get out in special, um, specially designed curriculum for. Right. And the, the consumer technology had just gotten to the point where it's flexible and powerful enough to mm -hmm. be um, just much cheaper, much easier to use. And we were right at that at that moment to launch. Right. And, and you've got that that silo, that core idea um, that you you 
really were focused on, but, but talk about all that other side stuff that happens. Um, I, I had a, a great discussion with Adrian Brabila. I don't know if you know him or not, but he's an online influencer and, um, and, and he makes a lot of money through um, affiliate programs, but he was sharing with us just the other day on all the work that goes into it to make the technology work. How has that experience been for you? Um, are you asking about like the focusing on what's important versus all the kind of stuff you have to do to run a business? Well, exactly. And that's, that's the key point, isn't it? You, you have to stay focused on what's important. And then it's like, all right, I know I need to do this, but to make that happen, there's 15 other things I got to feed into it. Correct. Yeah. We were really, um, really ruthless at cutting down. We, we chose simple as a product value in direct tension with being powerful or being useful in every situation. So mm -hmm. We focused on a very specific use case on a very specific set of technology for a very specific, you know, grade band of teachers and marketing to that exact same band. So we just kept all we at the expense of some features we really would have liked to build, just kept very focused so that our market was exactly lined up with our product that we knew we could support and stay competitive in that one little niche. And we would lose people to competitors that did a wider array of things, but we would first focus on our one area. And I would say one thing we've done differently than some tech startups is always be um, charging for the service right away. Mm -hmm. And that helped us keep focused on like what are people willing to pay for? And everybody sure. was giving us compliments left and right, but sifting through the compliments, looking for the ones where people are like, I, I believe in you enough to change my behavior and give you my money. Right. That helped us stay focused on what was really making people feel proud of their work with Pear Deck. And that's all money really is anyway, is, is someone really supporting your idea. I mean, to get behind it with a little bit of cash, that's, that's terrific. Um, and the best, in the best light for capitalism, that, that's the dream. <laughs> Ideally, right. <laughs> exactly right. So uh, do you guys now um, with Pear Deck, uh, you, you've got the system now in place and, and, and tell me about the open source where now you can start to add more and more content to what you offer. So we um, have always strived to work with all content and not be content providers ourselves. Yes. So developing curriculum is a... Um, a job that takes years of experience and expertise and our company is already good at that. Mm -hmm. And we didn't think we are, we had some new edge on creating good lessons. Right. Um, what we could do is we saw this new way that technology could support teachers in instructionally effective techniques in new ways. So we, from the beginning, we're like, it's your content, um, uh, you, the teacher, or you, the mm -hmm. school district. Right. Um, we will work to work with all of your other content. So we have some great partnerships with Encyclopedia Britannica and other ed tech companies like Newzella, where we've helped them use our tools to make their content easier to teach well uh, and expand it that way. That's fantastic. And, and your, your workforce space has also grown. I mean, how many, how many employees do you have now? Well, Pear Deck ha had about 90 employees uh, two weeks ago. Now the combined company of Go Guardian and Pear Deck, Go Guardian was on the order of 250 folks. So now we're about 350. Wow. So, and 90, not all local, I would assume. No, yeah, maybe we had 25 or 30 people in Iowa City. And then yeah. um, we were uh, going remote anyway as people, you know, shifted around geographically. But then when the coronavirus started really being a problem, you know, we had no idea how long it was going to last. Right. Why it, it didn't, we we're all in Zoom anyway. Uh, we opened up our hiring to across the country. So tell me about that scalability. How, how did you go through that process, Riley, where, where you started off just the four of you uh, and a great idea. And then, and then you had to, you had to scale up with employees and also continue to fund that model. How, what was that process like for you? Um, the the one thing I would repeat is just ask for lots of help and be really grateful for all the help you got you get. Um, we had so many amazing supporters um, from ICAD in Iowa City to mm -hmm. the EDC up in Cedar Rapids, helping us with everything from management advice and um, business planning to connections to funders, and it was through um, 
Josh Krakauer at Sculpt that we got connected to some folks uh, on the East Coast and, you know, just like always be saying, here's what we're doing that I'm really confident about and was really good at. And here's everything I need help with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, I think it, people, it's, for me, it's really fun to help other people with their challenges because you get, mm. it's like this fun conversation. We're like, oh, and then you, but there's no stress of you actually having to. Right. Um, so in that way, you can offer other people the chance to like, easily brainstorm with you on a really exciting challenge, but not be responsible ultimately. And that, that formed, I think, a strong community of support for us. That's fantastic. And then eventually uh, you and uh, Go Guardian crossed paths somewhere, correct? How did that all come about? Yeah, well, we first really um, took note of them back in 2016 uh, when okay. we saw that they were also working to make devices um, more useful for teaching well. And they took the approach of making it safe. So um, making sure students aren't uh, on some of the more dangerous areas of the internet uh, and helping teachers man manage uh, those devices. Like they, they built the capability for a teacher to just open the right tab on everybody's computer, uh, mm -hmm. which I, for the teachers out there, you'll know, like just ask 10, um, 11 year olds to go to a URL uh, the, the right. chances that you ever get all 10 of them on there uh, are right. pretty low. And if you do it, it'll be 20 minutes later. So exactly. they were taking that um, sort of really infrastructure level approach to making the devices better for teaching, where we had started more on the instructional technique at the teacher, like what does what kind of teaching does the teacher want to do and how can we help her um, do that better? Uh, so we've kind of like the same fundamental problem of making these devices into good teaching infrastructure, but we had sort of started on different ends. And so in 2016, we reached out to them and we started getting to know them. Uh, and then this year, uh, when everything was changing so fast, it just became clear to us that if we are gonna, um, we expect a lot to change in education permanently because of the mm -hmm. coronavirus. And we wanted to make sure we're uh, throwing it together and putting everything we have into it right now. Yeah, and you nailed it because when, when we talk about the coronavirus and the, and the impact that's had, especially within the areas of education, uh, you know, one of the things that, um, well, those of us as parents, obviously, it's, it's nice to be able to send our kids to school so we can work during the day. So now we have all these kids that were homeschooling. So if we're going to be homeschooling, we want to make sure that their experience is still as enriching as it possibly can be. And I think that's where Pear Deck comes into play. Yeah. And one of the things Pear Deck does for teachers, uh, professional teachers, as well as homeschoolers, um, is a uh, Pear Deck can make a lesson plan work whether you're in the same classroom or not. Uh, and so even teachers are finding that Pear Deck over Zoom, some of them are finding they're getting more engagement, more connection with their students over Zoom than they were without Pear Deck when they were together in the classroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, and, and I love this partnership with the Go Guardian because uh, Back when I left education back in 2014, that was really kind of the onslaught of the Chromebooks that were coming in. And, and the biggest concern with my teacher teams were, how do we keep the kids? Because they're at the front of the class. They all have their laptops open. And are they where they're supposed Facing to be? the other way, yeah. Uh -huh, right. And <laughs> what, are they, what are they really looking at there? Because when they're smirking in the back of the classroom, they're not on the lesson plan. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And we want to help teachers have the conversation with students about students starting to take responsibility for their own computer usage. I know when I'm at work as a 37 year old, I am on the wrong sites a fair amount of the time. So we want to help teachers build those skills inside the kids themselves. But again, with eight year olds, it's like uh, you need some support as a teacher. You, you do. You really, really you need a big mirror in the back of the classroom or something. But uh <laughs> No, this, this is terrific. So tell me, uh, you're relatively new to owning your own business. I mean, five years, six years, that's that's not really a long time. Um, what's Pear Deck is our lessons? second business. So okay. we started our first business in 2010. That was okay. actually good. And that was acquired okay. in 2012. So I right. um, still feel very new to all this, but uh, it is a second repetition. So, so tell me, what is some of the, some, what's some advice that you would want to give to other business owners? Hmm. I always, you know, I, I'm happy to share my experience. I, I have only two data points and so much of it has been luck and support and privilege and being in the right time in the right place. I think being one of our core company values has always been uh, humility 
and the ability or the practice, we have a few different practices of looking to see where you can improve and where you could ask for help and asking for feedback. And um, that process has, so whichever way we've gone and whatever mistakes we've made, because of that, we've been able to correct and find opportunities and not be too wed to our own ideas that we can't take advantage of a new support uh, or a new, um, a new idea from somebody in the company. So I think that's also helped different people in the company feel like they can share ideas and um, we could just get the benefit of everybody thinking as much as possible. Uh, so I that's not very specific advice, but no, no, but it, it, no, it is. Say, that would it, be it. No, right, right, Riley, it really is though, because, um, you know, back in my day, you know, it was all uh, make sure that you get a copyright in this and a copyright on that because someone's going to steal your idea. And you're saying something totally opposite. You were saying, be open, be honest, look for ideas, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to admit that there are some things you just don't know. You, you have this great idea. You know what it should look like on the on the end, but getting there, you realized we need some assistance. Yeah, and like the fundamental, I told you the fundamental idea behind Paradox in this podcast, but it took seven years to build it. You know, so it's, exactly. I'm not worried you're going to steal the idea. No, no, I mean that's exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, and, and um, with with other people I've spoken with as well, it's like great idea. It's easy to explain, but the work that goes into it it takes years and years and years, and and most people aren't willing to keep jumping those hurdles to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just like a lot of people don't have the uh, resources to like risk their whole job to, to do it. So I, I mean, I really put it in terms of like when we started Paradeck, we all agreed not to have salaries for six months. And yeah. that was the seed. And so by at the end of that six months, we had 12 districts as customers. We had raised $200,000 uh, to keep going. Yeah. Um, and all of that would have been completely impossible without the security of being able to do that in the first place. So right, right. I, I think a lot of people would do, uh, would keep at their passion if they had the, the chance. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. It's just sometimes people don't know what they don't know. Um, and you guys framed it the right way from the get go. Um, you, you definitely have a, a specific culture of working. And now that culture is just expanded now with this merger that you've had. Um, and and the nice thing too is that you don't all have to be confined to one locale. I mean, you're you're all over. That's right. Yeah, something like twenty different states. The taxes it's crazy. Are, the taxes are complicated. <laughs> I, I'm sure, but we have people that are good at that, right? That can figure that stuff out. So, well, uh, Riley, thank you very much. Is there any any last takeaways that we, that we can share with anybody else? What do you think? Um, gosh, I don't know. Just thanks to everyone for wearing a mask and washing your hands. Uh, especially thanks to teachers who are out there working, yeah. sometimes endangering their lives and their families' lives so that it's such an important part of our society can keep functioning. I've been proud to keep working on education during all this, but I've been able yeah. to do it from the safety of my own home while you know our, our son is home and uh, he's been safe and, and happy. And um, so I really appreciate all the folks that are working so hard. And you guys are all good, you're all healthy? Yeah. Yep. So far. I mean, it's still scary out there, but yeah, right. It is. It is. So mask up is the takeaway, but <laughs> Riley, thank you much, so much for joining us. Don't, don't go away here. Uh, my name is Lee Ivan. I'm a head coach here at Action Coach Campus. My special guest today, of course, was Riley with Pear Deck. And Riley, thanks again for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a lot.